Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to do Mark 1 to 5, Proverbs 7, Proverbs 6, and Psalm 66. Let's get started. This is the beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. Long ago, Isaiah the prophet wrote, I'll send my messenger ahead of you. He'll prepare your way. The messenger is calling out in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the desert. He preached that people should be baptized and turn away from their sins. Then God would forgive them. All the people from the countryside of Judea went out to him. All the people from Jerusalem went too. When they admitted they had sinned, John baptized them in the Jordan River. John wore clothes made out of camel's hair. He had a little leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. Here's what John was preaching. After me, there's someone coming who is more powerful than I am. I'm not good enough to bend down and untie his sandals. I baptize you with water, but uh, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee. John baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. Jesus was coming up out of the water. Just then he saw heaven being torn open. Jesus saw the Holy Spirit coming down on him like a dove. A voice spoke to him from heaven and said, You are my son, and I love you. I am very pleased with you. And once the Holy Spirit sent Jesus out into the desert, he was in the desert forty days. There Satan tempted him. The wild animals didn't harm Jesus. And he, angels took care of him. And after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee. He preached the good news of God. The time has come, and he said, The kingdom of God has come near. Turn away from your sins and believe the good news. One day Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee. There he saw Simon and his brother Andrew. They were thrown in there into the lake. He, they were fishing. Come and follow me, Jesus said. I will send you out to fish for people. And once they left their nets and followed him, then Jesus walked a little farther. As he did, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat preparing their nets. Right away he called out to them. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men. Then they followed Jesus. Jesus and those with him went to Capernaum. When the Sabbath day came, he went into the synagogue. There he began to teach him. The people were amazed at his teaching. That's because he taught them like one who had authority. He did not talk like the teachers of law. Just then a man in their synagogue cried out, He is controlled by an evil spirit. He said, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus, said Jesus firmly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man wildly. Then he came out of him with a scream. All the people were amazed. So they asked each other, What is this? A new teacher? And with so much authority, they, he even gives orders to evil spirits, and they obey. New spirit Jesus spread quickly over the, all over Galilee. <clears throat> Jesus and those with him left the synagogue. Right away they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was lying in bed with a fever. They told Jesus about her right away, so he went to her. He took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her. Then she began to serve her. That evening after sunset, the people brought Jesus, all who were sick. They also brought all who were controlled by demons. All the people in town gathered at the door. Jesus healed many of them. They had all kinds of sicknesses. He also drove out many demons. But he would not let the demons speak, because they knew who he was. It was very early in the morning, and it was still dark. Jesus got up and left the house. He went to a place where he could be alone. There he prayed. Simon and his friends went to look for Jesus. When they found him, they called him. Everyone is looking for him. Jesus replied, Let's go somewhere else. I want to go to the nearby town. I must preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled all around in Galilee. He preached in their synagogues. He also drove out demons. A man who had a skin disease came on, came to Jesus. On his knees, he begged Jesus. He said, If you are willing to make me clean, you can do it. Jesus became angry. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing to do it, Jesus said. Be clean. Right away the disease left the man, and he was clean. Jesus sent him away at once. He gave the man a strong warning. Don't tell this to anyone. He said, go and show yourself to the priest. Offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded. It will be a witness to the priest and the people that you are clean. Uh, the man went out and started talking right away. He spread the news to everyone. So Jesus could not, could not, could no longer enter a town openly. 
He stayed outside and learned with us, but people still came to him from everywhere. A few days later, Jesus entered Capernaum again, and he, the people heard that he had home, come home. So many people gathered that there was no room left. There was not even a room outside the door. When Jesus preached the word to four of those who came were carrying them there, who could not walk, but they could not get in close to Jesus because of the crowd. So they made a hole by digging through the lip, through the roof above Jesus. Then they lowered the man through it on a mat. Jesus saw their faith, so he said to them, Son, your sins are forgiven. Some teachers of the law were sitting there. They were thinking, Why is this fellow talking like that? He's saying a very evil thing. Only God can forgive sins. Right away Jesus knew what they were thinking. So he said to them, why are you thinking of these things? It is, is it easier to say to this man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take him out and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So Jesus spoke to the man who could not walk. I tell you, he said, get up, take your mat and go home. Then the man got up and took his mat. Then he walked away while everyone watched. All the people were amazed. They praised God and said, we have never seen anything like this. Once again, Jesus went out beside the Sea of Galilee. A, a large crowd came to him. He began to teach them. As he, as he walked along, he saw a Levi, the son of Alphaeus. Levi was sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him. Levi got up and followed him. Later, Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house. Many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples. They were part of the large crowd following Jesus. Some teachers of the law who were Pharisees were there. They saw Jesus eating with sinners and tax collectors. So they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard that. So he said to them, Those who are healthy don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to follow me. John's disciples and the Pharisees were going without eating. Some people came to Jesus. They said to him, John's disciples are fasting. The disciples of the Pharisees are used to fasting. But your disciples are not. Why aren't they? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the groom go without eating while he is with them? They will not fast as long as he is with them. But the time will come when the groom will be taken away from them. On that day, they will go without eating. No one sews pattern new cloth on old clothes. Otherwise, the new piece will tear, pull away from the old. That will make the tear worse. No one pours new wine into old wine skins. Other Wise, the wine will burst the skins. Then the wine and the wine skins will both be destroyed. No, people pour new wine into new wine skins. On Sabbath day, Jesus was walking with his disciples through the grain field. The disciples began to break off some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to Jesus, Look, it is against the law to do this on the Sabbath day. Why are your disciples doing this? He answered, Have you knew ever read about what David did? He and his men were hungry. They needed food. It was when a beer fell at the heart was High priest. David entered the house of God and ate the holy bread. Only priests were allowed to eat. David also gave some to his men. Then Jesus said to him, The Sabbath day was made for man. Man was not made for the Sabbath day. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Another time Jesus went into the synagogue. A man with a weak and twisted hand was there. Some Pharisees were trying to find fault with Jesus. They watched him closely. They wanted to see if he could heal the man on the Sabbath day. Jesus spoke to the man with the weak and twisted hand. Stand up in front of everyone, he said. Then Jesus asked them, What does the law say we should do on the Sabbath day? Should we do good or should we do evil? Should we save life or should we kill them? But no one is. Jesus looked around at them in anger. He was very upset because their hearts were stubborn. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand had become as good as new. Then the Pharisees went out and began to make plans with the Herodians. They wanted to kill Jesus. Jesus went off to the sea, sea of Galilee with his disciples. A large crowd from Galilee followed. People heard about all the, all that Jesus was doing, and many came to. They came from Judea, Jerusalem, and Idumea. They came from the lands east of the Jordan River, and they came from that area around Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowd, Jesus told his disciples to get a small boat ready for him. This would keep the people from crowding him. Jesus had healed many people, so those who were sick were pushing forward to touch him. 
When people controlled by evil spirits saw him, they fell down in front of him. The spirits shouted, You are the Son of God. But Jesus ordered them not to tell people about him. Jesus went up on a mountainside. He called for seven people to come to him, and they came. He appointed twelve of them so that they would be with him. But he would also send them out to preach, and he gave them authority to drive out demons. So Jesus appointed the twelve disciples. Simon was one of them. Jesus gave him the name Peter. There were, there were James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Jesus gave them the name Boranagus. Boranagus means son of thunder, sons of thunder. They were also Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, and James, the son of Alphaeus. And there were the Thais and Simon the Zero. Judas Iscariot was one of them. He was the one who was later going to hand Jesus over to his enemies. Jesus entered a house. Again, a crowd gathered. It was so large that Jesus and his disciples were not even able to eat. His family heard about this. So they went to take charge of him. They said, He is out of his mind. Some teachers of the law were there. They had come down from Jerusalem. They said, He is controlled by Beelzebub. He is driving out demons by the power of the Prince of Demons. So Jesus called them over to him. He began to speak to them using stories. He said, How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom fights against itself, it can't stand. If a family is divided, it can't stand. And if Satan fights against himself and his helpers are divided, he can't stand. That is the end of him. In fact, none of you can enter a stronghold's house unless you turn him up first. Then you can steal things from his house. What I'm about to tell you is true. Everyone's sins and evil words against God will be forgiven. But whoever speaks evil things against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. Their guilt will last forever. Jesus said this because the teachers of the law were saying, He has an evil spirit. Jesus' mother and brothers came to him and stood outside. They sent someone in to get him. A crowd was sitting around Jesus. They told him, Your mother and your brothers are outside. They're looking for you. Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? He asked. Then Jesus looked at the people sitting in a circle around him. He said, Here is my mother. Here are my brothers. And none who does what God wants is my brother or sister or mother. Again, Jesus began to teach about the Sea of Galilee. The crowd that gathered around him was very large. So he got into a boat. He sat it down in there out on the lake. All the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things using stories. In his teaching, he said, Listen, a far farmer went out to plant a seed. He scattered the seed on the ground. Some fell on a path. Birds came and ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky places where there wasn't much soil. The plants came out quickly because the soil wasn't deep. When the sun came up, it burned the plants. They dried up because they had no roots. Other seed fell on the thorns. The thorns grew up and crowded out the plants, so the plants did not bear grain. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It grew up and produced a crop 30, 60, or even 100 times more than the farmer planted. Then Jesus said, Whoever has ears should listen. Later, Jesus was alone. The twelve disciples asked him about the story. So did the so did the others around him. He told them, The secret of God's kingdom has been given to you. But to outsiders, everything is told using stories. In that way, they'll see but never know what they're seeing. They'll hear but never understand. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this story? Then how will you understand any stories of this kind? The seed the farmer plants is God's message. What is seen scattered on a path like? The message is planted. The people hear the message. Then Satan comes. He takes away the message that was planted in them. And what is seed scattered on rocky places like? The people hear the message. And once they receive it with joy, but they have no roots. So they last only a short time. They quickly fall away from the faith when trouble or suffering comes because of the message. And what is seed scattered on rocky thorns like? The people hear the message. But then the worries of this life comes to them. Wealth comes with its false promises. All of these are the kinds of things that cry out the message. They keep it from producing fruit. And what is seed scattered on good soil like? The people hear the message. They accept it. They produce a good crop, 30, 60, or even 100 times more than the farmer planted. Jesus said to them, Do you bring in a lamb to put it under a large bowl or a bed? Don't you put it on its stand? What is hidden is meant to be seen. And what is put out of sight is meant to be brought out into the earth.
Whoever has the ear should listen. Think carefully about what you hear. You say. As you give, so you will receive. In fact, you will receive even more. Whoever has something will be given more. Whoever has nothing, even what they have, will be taken away from them. Jesus also said, Here's what God's kingdom is like. A farmer scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, the seed comes up and grows. It happens whether the farmer sleeps or gets up. He doesn't know how it happens. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First, the stalk comes up, then the head appears. Finally, the full grain appears in the head. Before long, the grain ripens. So the farmer cuts it down because the harvest is ready. Again, Jesus said, What can we say God's kingdom is like? What story can we use to explain? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Well, when you plant the seed, it grows. It becomes the largest of all garden plants. Its branches are so big that birds can rest in its shape. You see many stories like these. Jesus spoke to the word to them. He told them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a story. But when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything. When evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's go over to the other side of the lake. They left the crowd behind, and they took him along in a boat, just as he was. There were also other boats with him. A wild storm came up. Waves crashed over the boat. He was about to sleep. Jesus was in the back, sleeping on a cushion. Those disciples woke him up. They said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up and ordered the wind to stop. He said to the wave, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you all so afraid? Do you, don't you have any faith at all yet? They were terrified. They asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves control. Obey. Then they went across the Sea of Galilee to the area of the garrison. Jesus got out of the boat. A man controlled by an evil spirit came from the tombs to the music. The man lived in the tombs. No one could keep him tied up anymore. Not even a chain could hold him. His hands and feet had often been changed, but he tore, tore the chains apart, and he broke the iron cuffs on his ankles. No one was strong enough to control. Night day he screamed among the tombs and in the hills. He cut himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus a long way off, he ran to him. He fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, Jesus, son of the most high God, what do you want with me? I swear to God that you won't hurt me. This was because Jesus had said to them, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked the demon, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied. There are many of us. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the earth. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, Send us among the pigs. Let us go into them. Jesus had allowed it. The evil spirits came out of the man and went into the pigs. There were about 2,000 pigs in the herd. The whole herd rushed down the steep bank. They ran into the lake and drank. Those who were tending the pigs ran off. They told the people in the town and the countryside what had happened. The people went to see for themselves. Then they came to Jesus. They saw the man who had been controlled by many demons. He was sitting there. He was now dressed and thinking clearly. All this made the people afraid. Those who had seen it told them what had happened to the men. They told her about the pigs as well. Then the people began to beg Jesus to leave their, leave their area. Jesus was getting into the boat. He, the man who had been controlled by demons begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him. He said, go home to your own people. Tell them how much the Lord has done for you. Tell them how kind he has been to you. So the man went away. In the area known as the Ten Cities, he began to tell how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee in a boat. He landed at the other side. There were there a large crowd gathered around him. There, then a man named Jairus came. He was a sandal leader. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He begged Jesus, Please come. My little daughter is done. Place your hands on her to heal her, and she will live. So Jesus went with him. A large group of people followed. They cried around him. 
woman wasn't there who had seen her that made her bleed. It had lasted for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal, even though she had gone to many doctors. She had spent all the money she had, but, but she was getting worse, not better. Then she heard about Jesus. She came up behind me in the crowd and touched his clothes. She thought, I just need to touch his clothes, then I'll be healed. Right away her bleeding stopped. She felt in her body that her suffering was over. At once Jesus knew that power had gone out of him. He turned around in the crowd. He asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people his disciples answered. They are crying against you. And he still asked, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around. He went to see who had touched him. Then the woman came and fell at his feet. She knew what had happened to her. She was shaking his feet. But she told him the whole truth. He, has, he said to her, dear woman, your faith is healed. Go in peace. You feel you are free from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus. He was the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the, the teacher anymore? Jesus heard what they were saying. He told the synagogue leader, Don't be afraid. Just believe. He let only Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, follow him. They came to the house of the synagogue leader. There Jesus saw a lot of confusion. People were crying and sobbing loudly. He went inside. They said to them, Why all this confusion and sorrow? The child is not dead. She is only sleeping. But they laughed at him. He made them all go outside. He took only the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him. And he went in by where the child was. He took her by the hand. So then he said to her, Talitha Kum. This means, Little girl, I say to you, get up. The girl was 12 years old. Right away she stood up and began to walk around. They were totally amazed at this. Jesus gave strict orders not to let anyone know what had happened, and he told them to give her something to eat. Proverbs 6 I said, don't promise to pay for what you need. I don't agree to pay a stranger's bill. Don't be trapped by what you're saying. Don't be caught by the words of your mouth. Instead, my son, do something to free yourself. Don't fall into your neighbor's hands. Go until you can't go anymore. Don't let your neighbor rest. Don't let your eyes go to sleep. Don't let your eyelids close. As a deer frees itself from a hunter, free yourself. As a bird frees itself from a trapper, free yourself. You people who don't want to work, think about the end. Consider his ways and be wise. He is no command. He is no leader or ruler. But it stores up its fruit in some. It gathers its fruit to harvest some. You lazy people. How long will you lie there? When will you get up from your sleep? You might sleep a little or take a little nap. You might even fold your hands and rest. Then you will be poor as if someone had robbed you. You would have little as if someone had so long you. An evil troublemaker goes around saying twisted things with his mouth. He links with his eyes. He makes signals with his feet. He motions with his fingers. His plans are evil and he is lies in his heart. He is always doing up fights. Trouble will catch up with him in an instant. He will suddenly be destroyed and nothing can save him. There are six things the Lord hates. In fact, he hates seven things. The Lord hates proud eyes, a lion cup, and hands that kills those who aren't good. He also hates hearts that make evil plans and feet that are quick to do evil. He hates any witness who pulls out lies and anyone who stirs a conflict in the community. My son, keep your father's command. Don't turn away from your mother's to you. Always tie them on your heart. Put them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you wake up, they will speak to you. Your father's command is like a light. Your mother's teaching is like a light. And whatever the strike is, and corrects you, leads to life. It keeps you from your neighbor's wife. It keeps you from the smooth talk of a woman who commits adultery. Don't have me in your heart after a beauty. Don't let her ask how she A prostitute can be brought for only a little bit, but another man's wife can do very well. You can't show fire into your lap without burning your coal, clothes. You can't walk on hot coals without burning your feet. It's the same for anyone who has sex with another man's wife. If no one who touches her will be punished. People don't hate a thief who steals to fill his empty stomach. But when he is poor, he must pay seven times as much as he stole. He may even cost him everything he has. A man who commits adultery has no sin. The man who does it destroys himself. He will be beaten up and disowned. His shame will never be wiped away. Jealousy stirs up a husband's anger. He will show no mercy when you get deep. He won't save any pain. He won't take any money, no matter how much he is offered. Psalm 66. She had to God for joy, everyone on earth. Sing about the glory of his name. Give him glorious praise. Say to God, what wonderful things you do. Your power is so great that your enemies bow down to you in fear. Everyone on earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of the name. Come and see what God has done. See what wonderful things he has done for people. 
He turned the Red Sea into dry land. The people of Israel passed through the waters on foot. Come, let's be full of joy because of what he did. Let he rules by his power forever. He, his eyes watch the nations. Let no one who refuses to obey him rise up against him. Praise our God, O ye nations. Let the sound of the praise you give him be heard. He has kept us alive. He has kept our feet from slumber. God, you have tested us. You have put us through fire to make us like silver. You put us in prison. You placed heavy loads on our backs. You let our enemies ride out their chariots out over our heads. We went through a fire and water, but you brought us to a place where we have everything we need. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings. I will keep my promises to you. I made them with my hands. My mouth spoke them when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you as burnt offerings. I will offer rams, bulls, and goats to you. Come and hear all you who have respect for God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. I praised him with my tongue. If I had enjoyed making having sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But, sure, but God has surely listened. He has heard my prayer. Give praise to God. He has accepted my prayer. He has not held back his love from me. Now that's done, I should now do the Lord's prayer. Please bow your heads. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. You will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we raise for you and our debtors. There is none into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.